Hey there, econ students and teachers. In this video, I'm going to talk about the proposed tariffs that Donald Trump has stated his support for on imported steel and aluminum. You've probably heard about this in the news this week. Well, if you're an AP or an IB economic student, you might be called upon to illustrate and explain the effect of what we call protectionist tariffs. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Please enjoy, subscribe to my channel, and head over to econclassroom.com for more great resources for economic students and teachers. If you've been following the news, you've probably heard that President Trump has proposed new tariffs on imported steel and aluminum into the United States of America. In this video, I want to talk about how these tariffs could affect me personally. Now, if you're like me and you live here in the United States, chances are these tariffs will probably affect you as well. So this video applies to anybody living in the United States. Let's start with the definition of a tariff. A tariff has a very simple definition. It is simply a tax on imports. Typically tariffs serve two purposes. Tariffs could be used to raise revenue for the government, or in the case of these tariffs that Trump is proposing, they could be used for protection of domestic industries. So these tariffs are what we call protectionist tariffs. The purpose is to raise the price of a good that is being imported to increase the quantity of that good supplied by domestic producers. Now to understand the effect that these tariffs are likely to have on the United States consumer and producers, we're gonna look at two different markets. In the left, we'll look at the market for steel here in the United States. And on the right, we'll look at the market for new trucks in the United States. Now, I myself drive a pickup truck. I drive a Toyota Tacoma. It was produced down in San Antonio, Texas. The best-selling vehicle here in the United States is the Ford F-150. There are many other vehicles made in the United States as well. One thing that all these vehicles have in common is that they require steel as an input. So steel is what we call an input or a factor of production or a resource needed to produce new trucks. We're going to look at the effect that these tariffs would have on the price of steel and the quantity of steel in the United States, but also on the price and quantity of new trucks in the United States. Which of these two markets am I more likely to participate in? Well, I've never bought an ounce of steel in my life. However, I have bought several new vehicles, including my most recent one, my Toyota pickup truck. So I'm actually a consumer over here in this market. But to understand how the tariff affects me, we need to first look at how it's going to affect the steel market in the United States. To do that, of course, we need to put a demand and a supply curve in our US steel market. Now these represent both the domestic supply, representing the supply from American producers of steel, and the domestic demand, representing the demand from American consumers of steel. In other words, those car manufacturers and other industries that depend on steel to produce their goods. Now there's one more line we have to add to this graph because as we have learned in recent weeks, the U.S. steel market is not a closed market. There is a world supply of steel from which U.S. consumers buy some of their steel. Now the world supply of steel is not an upward sloping line. Rather, it is a horizontal line. I'm going to draw it in pink here. I'm going to label the world supply SW. Now why is the world supply horizontal? That's simple, because the U.S. is one of only 200 countries that buy steel on the world market. There are dozens of countries that produce steel, and the price of steel is not determined by U.S. demand and supply. It is determined by world demand and supply. Since the U.S. is only one consumer of steel, our level of supply and demand does not directly affect the world price of steel, which today, because I just looked it up, happens to be around $500 per metric ton. So the world price of steel is $500. At that world price, there is a quantity produced by American producers of what I'll call QS and a quantity demanded by American consumers. Of course, that's not households. Those consumers of steel are the industries that require steel to produce their finished goods. That quantity is QD. Now, before trade, there is a quantity of steel that will be imported into the United States. That quantity is determined by the difference between how much steel is demanded by American firms that use steel and how much steel is supplied by American firms that produce steel. Let's go ahead and look at the consumer surplus in the steel market. That represents the welfare or the happiness of all the companies that buy steel. It's represented by the yellow triangle here. Okay, the yellow triangle represents consumer surplus in the U.S. steel market. That's the difference between what consumers of steel were willing to pay and what they actually had to pay, that $500 at the world price. The domestic producer surplus is a relatively small triangle. 
it's represented by the blue area, which shows how happy or how well off or how profitable American steel producers are. At the world price of $500, they're not doing all that great. Other countries have a much lower cost in steel production. Therefore, American producers are forced to compete with those foreign producers, resulting in a relatively small amount of steel produced in the United States. So what is President Trump proposing here? He's proposing a 25% tax on all imported steel. On all imported steel. That's the tariff rate he's proposing. So how would that affect the price of steel here in the United States? It would raise the price by $125. 15% of $500 is $125. So we'd see the supply from the rest of the world decrease, which graphically looks like an upward shift. I'll call this SWT for the supply with tariff. I'm gonna call the new price PT. That's $500 plus the 125. Down here we can do 500 plus 125. Gives us a new price of steel in the United States of $625. So it would not be surprising to see the price of steel in the U.S. increase to as much as $625 as a result of President Trump's proposed 25% tariff on imported steel. Now we can go a little further in our analysis of how these proposed tariffs would affect different stakeholders here in the United States. First, let's look at domestic steel producers, those who are meant to benefit from this protectionist tariff. Not surprisingly, U.S. producers of steel should be better off as a result of this 25% tariff. The higher price leads to an increase in the quantity supplied of steel by American firms. So we'll have a new quantity supplied that I'll call QS1. However, all the companies in the United States that depend on steel are going to be made worse off. The higher price causes the quantity demanded by those U.S. auto manufacturers, airplane manufacturers, bicycle manufacturers, all the industries that depend on steel will be worse off as the quantity demanded falls. I'll call this QD1. So there will be a decrease in quantity demanded, an increase in quantity supplied, and of course, the intention of the tariff is to reduce imports. So imports will be smaller as well. Imports have decreased. Now we could look at the effect on foreign producer revenue. We're not going to do that in this graph because we're focusing on the U.S. consumer and producer, not necessarily the rest of the world. So we can erase our original area of consumer surplus and we can now shade the new area of consumer surplus, which is clearly smaller because of the higher price. So this represents the welfare or the surplus of all the American consumers of goods that require steel. They're worse off, not surprisingly. They're paying a higher price and they're buying less steel now. Producers of steel in the US are going to be better off. This is the whole point of the protectionist tariff. Producers enjoy a higher amount of producer surplus. So you may say, well, this is a win situation. The US is gonna be better off because there's gonna be more jobs in the steel industry. Well, hold on, we haven't looked at the whole picture yet. Another area we can shade in this graph is what we call the government revenue. The green rectangle here, which is basically determined by the $125 per ton times the quantity of imports. The government collects revenue from this tariff. That's not the whole purpose of the tariff, of course. It's not gonna be that much relative to the rest of the taxes the US government collects, but there will be some government revenue. So what's the net effect on total surplus in the United States? We have two areas on this graph that used to be included in total surplus, but are no longer. I'm gonna shade those in purple. The purple shaded triangles, that's these two little triangles on either side of the government's revenue, represent what we call the deadweight loss. The deadweight loss. The American steel industry is actually worse off because the industry consists not only of producers, it also consists of consumers. Producers are going to be better off, of course, but all the firms that depend on steel will be made worse off because of the higher price. And the net effect on total surplus in the United States will be the loss of the purple triangle seen on this graph. But this has not answered my original question. How will President Trump's proposed steel tariffs affect me? I am not a consumer of steel. I don't really care if steel prices are higher. What I care about is truck prices. Eventually, I'm going to want to buy a new truck. So we need to look over here in the truck market with an upward sloping supply curve and a downward sloping demand curve and an original equilibrium price determined by the intersection of supply and demand, we'll call this QE and PE, there's our original equilibrium and an original level of total surplus or consumer and producer surplus of the yellow. And of course, we need to look at original 
level of producer surplus. This represents the welfare of Ford and Toyota and GMC and Chevy and all the companies that produce trucks here in the United States. This was our total welfare or total surplus in the U.S. before the tariff was imposed. But how does this higher world price of steel in the United States affect the truck market in the United States? Well, since steel is an input, higher input prices will reduce the supply, we'll call this S1, of new trucks being produced in the United States. Higher steel prices cause the production costs for U.S. truck producers to rise and lead to a decrease in the equilibrium quantity of trucks produced in the United States to Q1 and an increase in the equilibrium price to P1. And, yep, you guessed it, there's going to be a loss of welfare in the United States. Consumers of trucks, that's me, that's you, that's anybody who might buy a new vehicle here in the United States, are worse off. And producers of trucks and cars and bicycles and anything else, airplanes, anything that requires steel, all those producers are going to be worse off. And here's where we really see the harm of these steel tariffs. The loss of welfare in the industries that require steel to produce their goods and services is illustrated by the purple area in this graph. This is our dead weight loss. You've heard that term before if you've been watching my videos. There's a loss of total surplus or happiness or welfare in both the steel market and more importantly in the market for all the finished goods and services that depend on steel. The only winners of this tariff are a handful of steel producing firms here in the United States that will see higher profits and potentially employ more workers because of the 25% tariff. The losers of this proposed tariff, on the other hand, are all the industries that employ tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of Americans that require steel in their production. There will be jobs lost in those industries. There will be higher prices and reduced sales in those industries. And guess what? Some of those industries export their goods as well. Ford sells cars all over the world, many of which are produced here in the United States. Higher prices for steel will hurt Ford Motor Company's exports and potentially reduce employment even further. So why impose tariffs? Well, President Trump ran on the platform of protecting America's big, old industries, steel, coal, gas, aluminum. These industries he promised to protect. He's fulfilling a campaign promise, but the losers are going to be you and me and every other American that either buys products produced in the United States that use steel and aluminum or works for a company that requires steel and aluminum to produce its products. So clearly, the losers are going to outweigh the winners in this case. There's pretty much no doubt about that. But there's another side to the story as well, and we've already started to hear this in the news this week. How will Canada and Japan and South Korea and China and Mexico respond as the U.S. raises taxes on their exports? Well, how do you think they'll respond? They'll respond by retaliating. There's already been talk of retaliatory tariffs by our trading partners. We can expect to see the taxes that foreign consumers pay on our goods increase, further reducing employment in our domestic industries. So who are we really protecting here? Are we protecting Americans? Are we protecting American consumers and producers? No, President Trump is protecting a handful of powerful stakeholders who, for whatever reason, he has chosen to favor over all the other stakeholders in the United States. Let me be clear. This is not a political YouTube channel. This is not a political video. This is an economic video. I've completed very basic economic analysis here to show the consequences of protectionist tariffs on different stakeholders. I've outlined the winners. There's clearly a benefit. These guys are the winners right here. American steel producers could be better off, but there are lots of losers as well. Losers, American steel consumers, that's all the industries that require steel. Losers, American households who buy anything made out of steel produced in the United States. Losers, American employers, firms that produce goods that require steel here in the United States. And overall, there is a loss of welfare for the United States steel and automobile industries. One more winner I forgot to point out, of course, is the U.S. government, because they'll collect tax revenues from these tariffs. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and head over to econclassroom.com for more great resources for economic students and teachers. Here we go. One step at a time, don't believe